Hey, what's up? It's Nephibus. Hip hop artist. Yeah, you heard me. Check out the music. So, I wanted to just address that. It's about to be like some changes with me. So, just for those who care, I mean, it's only a couple of people. I think I get like two to five views now. So, I. That's better than nothing, right? <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> but yeah, I just wanted to like. Give a heads up to those who, who care. I know most of you don't, but for those who do. Because, you know, I'm starting to work this job basically to get down into what it is. Um, I got to drive two and a half, three hours. Then I work ten hours. Then I got to drive back home. So, <laughs> needless to say, um, I'm not going to really be having the time to do anything. Like... That's going to be, basically my whole life is going to be dedicated to work. But, <laughs> the bright side is that, you know, I'm getting money to be able to work on my music and eventually, like, get out of here. Because, I mean, I don't, I'm going to spend the rest of my life here. I want to have my own place. And, um... So my thought pattern was that I could do one or two things. Like, cause this, this is a temp job. So I was thinking like, I could work my butt off, go for the conversion so that I could stay there and then get a place out in that area near that job. So at the very least, I can cut off of some of that travel time. That way, you know, I have a bit more time to myself, of course. With the level of difficult work, I'd probably be using that extra time mostly to sleep because it is a lot to deal with. But at least going into my days off, I'll at least have, you know, a couple of hours extra, even if it's one or two. Hey, that's, that's time I can invest into what I do. Good news is, that I'll mainly be working four days a week, so that's three days off. Except for when there's, you know, overtime, then it'll be two, but, you know, some level of benefit. But I mainly, I mainly like it because I have, like, minor social phobia. So for me, it, it's, it's really hard doing jobs you know dealing with people where i feel really uncomfortable to the point to where sometimes i just i just might have a panic attack or i might not want to come in and it just completely destroys me and it's difficult dealing with customers because um not all customers are bad but there's a lot of customers that's like they're like spoiled two-year-olds and it's it's just so difficult to deal with them and when a customer gets mad it doesn't matter what you say it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter that there's really nothing you can do about the situation like it's just so stressful and there's, there's almost no way to calm them down I mean yeah you can calm them down but man they put you through so much so that's why I'm glad to not have to deal like directly with customers. And all a lot of jobs they don't like when you say stuff like that. But me, like, I just can't deal with all those attitudes and them baby temper tantrums. Like they, they people are so unreasonable, and they try to come up with this logical explanation as to why you're not trying to do something for them or what. Look, look. Ain't no business in existence that's going to not do something that's going to make them money. And ain't no person on this planet that wants to be even half as stressed out as people make them. Trust and believe that everybody at their jobs, they want to break every rule possible. Just, to, just so you don't stress them out. Just for that alone. Not even not even a rule breaker. They could be like the most straight and narrow person ever. And they'd be like, I wish I could break this rule for this person so they could just stop stressing me out. That's how bad customers stress people out. Like dead serious. So nobody is ever 
ever at any business going to intentionally not do what you want. They can't do it for whatever reason it is, whether it's just not possible or whether there's some rules set in place or or whatever it is. That there's some legit reason why they're not going to do it. And that's why like impartial like I always feel the people on the side of the whole like Pokemon thing that are defending it and while some people are like oh you know people you know let whatever happen and for me personally it has nothing to do with looking the other way it's because I have been a job hopper my entire life you know it's not something that I wanted to do but hey it's uh, a lot of things happen and what I can say is that it literally 100% of the jobs that I have worked at, customers have always felt like I have not done something for them because for, I just didn't want to do it. And literally 0% of the time have I not wanted to do it, okay? It's not my money, it's not my product. Uh, I'm not getting no type of benefit of keeping it from you. I'm not getting no type of benefit I'm not giving you what you want because you you stressing me out like I'm lo I'm losing 10, 20 years off my life because all the stress you bring in me. Trust and believe I'd rather live longer than to hold something back for you just to piss you off for no reason at all. Like trust and believe whatever you want I will, if I could give it to you I would so you stop stressing me out. Trust and believe that. So that's that's why. That's why I support the side that's like defending the Pokemon company because I understand like people don't know what's going on behind the scenes. They assume they do. They come up with these perfect logical reasons and it's like I know from the other side it's always like yo if you were on my side of things and you saw everything going down and you actually knew how all of this worked you'd understand. But you don't because you're not on this side. And it's just way too much to explain. And when you try to explain it to people, all they do is break it apart piece by piece and try to explain how you're lying. So there's no point in even even making the attempt to explain to people. Because they're not going to listen. And, and people can't understand things from being told. They have to experience it to really truly understand and really finally get it and be like, oh, because let's be honest, even at a lot of my jobs, we had managers who were above us and they have all of their logical reasons about why we fail into meet quota because blah, 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 blah. And we sitting there like, yo, if you did our job, you would see why we are failing to make quota. But you don't listen to us. You don't understand. It's a billion reasons. We can't just tell you, oh, this one thing right here, you fix that one thing. It's so many different things that are an issue. So, yeah, people don't just don't understand. So, anyway, so my idea is to either get converted, stay on this job. Or in the meantime, like in between time, you know, on my days off, you know, I put in applications here and there for stuff that I went to school for, you know, only accept a job if I'm getting like more money. Um, but so I'm a, I'm a dude like try one of those two methods. I thought maybe if I stay on with this company, if I reach a certain tier, then, you know, they might assist me with relocation. If they don't, then I'll hopefully make enough money to where I could pay for the relocation myself and then I can move out to Cali. But you know, me being in this position is a is actually a mixture of things. I mean between, you know, moving forward with my life but also with the whole relationship like situation because I just told someone that, you know, like I wanted to go to platonic friends route. I'm I'm not going to go like in the full detail because there were there were several reasons as to why I I felt that way 
And I still have feelings for that person. I'm still attracted to him. But I felt like I felt like this was the best decision for me because the re the relationship was really heavily stressing me out. And it wasn't all like they took it as like um past experience type things, but it wasn't just that. It was there was moments of where I was having these gut feelings. These gut feelings that would just bother me that felt like something was wrong. It had nothing to do with past experiences. It was just those gut feelings. And I know in the past with relationships I always tried to ignore them because I didn't want to be that person. You know the person who assumes that you're doing something wrong when you're not. I don't want to but every single time those gut feelings have always been right. It's like you need to trust them. Especially for someone like me because I'm the type of guy that a lot of women when they deal with me, they they try to manipulate me. They lie to me, whatever. And I'm not saying that this person was lying to me or trying to manipulate me or whatnot. But you just got to trust it because, you know, you got your own things going on. And so anyway, I felt like the person wanted too much. And I don't think there was anything wrong with what they wanted, but I feel like I didn't like how they went about it. I didn't like, you know, where their mind was concentrated. And, you know, there were some factors of what they wanted that I honestly didn't want. And it was just different things that I didn't want, like changing my eating habits. And as far as like, you know, the working out, I do want to work out for myself. But I didn't want to go from 0 to 106 seconds. Like, I I, I don't really work out. I mean, when I, when I was younger, there was a point I worked out. You know, I lift weights. I used to be bigger than I am now. Whatever. But right now, I haven't been working out. So I can't jump from not working out to working out like somebody who works out on a regular. Like, just like that. You know, I need time to lift that up. And then it's like, I have certain limitations because... I want to be I want to be in shape. I want to have a nice body, but I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be super buff and like swole and everything. I'm not trying to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm just trying to get in shape. And not saying that that's what she wanted, but I just felt like for her with her expectations, she it was pressing like too much on me on too high of a level at once. I felt like I need to go at my own pace. I need to build up and if if you're gonna like pressure it to be here right now I feel like you need to you need to find someone who's already there instead of someone who's not there that you build up to being there and don't get me wrong I do feel like it is a great thing for a woman to be with a man when he's down and for them to build together and build up because in my personal opinion, that puts you in a position to where you can build a stronger relationship. You can have more loyalty and whatever like that. I mean, that's not guaranteed for every situation because there's exceptions to everything. But I think that is a great thing. And I know for me personally, I'm going to be more inclined to date a woman who's there when I'm down. The one who came along when I was up. Then that's, that's just for me personally. But at the same time, it's like you gotta you gotta back off and let me go at my own pace. But beyond that fact that there was also things that she wanted that I I honestly didn't want. I have a different perception of what I want. And I don't feel like there was anything wrong with what she wanted. Everything she said made sense. It just it wasn't for me. And now like like really getting into it, thinking about it, I feel like Maybe dating in general might not be for me because I feel like I feel like, you know, most if not all of the women that I've met have had expectations along these lines. And I I don't like those expectations. They were turn off for me and I really don't want that in a relationship. So I feel like I'd rather be alone than be stressed out because, you know, I'm dealing with women who want xyz for me and i just feel like i don't want a relationship that's like that that's based off of that or 
whatever like that. My main concentration is 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 really like being happy. And don't get me wrong, like in a relationship, I do I do want to give, but I don't want to be in a position where I feel like I'm completely changing myself or completely changing the things that you know I believe in and I don't mean that from a religious standpoint because I'm not religious but at a point that if I believe that in a relationship there should be XYZ happening like or maybe like it shouldn't be happening you know I don't know how to really explain it or get into it but like for me I'm I'm a person that I'm not big on gender roles I'm more of a, like, we both work together, we both do these things, and it's like, if there's something that you wouldn't do for me, don't ask me to do it for you. Like, that, like that's, that's, that's how I feel about, that's how I feel about things. Because if you feel so strongly about, you don't want to do something for me, then I feel like you shouldn't ask me to do it for you. Because there's a reason behind why you feel so strongly against it. Now, of course, there there are like certain exceptions to that situation. But it's kind of like in a sense of, let's say, let's say you were doing something with somebody and they were the leader and they asked everybody under them to do something that they would never do themselves. You're going to sit there and be like, that's that's some BS like I, I shouldn't have to do this you know what I'm saying and I feel like it, that's similar in the situation of the relationship to where you're like you know a I want you to do this but you know that you would never do that for the other person like I I don't like I don't like stuff like that and so that just made me really like look at life as I'm gonna just have to take everything one day at a time and continue moving forward so the the job thing that's that's a job you know I'm gonna make the money but I'm not I'm not gonna worry about that I'm not gonna stress about that it's it's whatever I work that job I get the hours I get and I pay my bills with that money but outside of that situation outside of that job like all of my time is going to go towards music and gaming and that's what it's going to be i can't work on it as much as i want to because i got to spend all of that time working but at least i'll be in a position where i can have my own place i don't have to deal with the you know the stress of living in someone's place of having to deal with you know their rules and whatever like that i'll have the freedom to you know be me and also do what I want I don't have to have somebody complaining in my ear I don't have to I don't have to deal with any of those stressful factors because I'll be alone and I'll be spending my alone time doing what I love which is making music and playing video games and if I need social interaction I can use social media and plus you know from my personal experience like when I when I lived alone before, like ironically, even though I like being alone and I don't go out and whatever, I met a lot more people living on my own than I have like living with someone else where I always want to be away from the house because they stress me out and they have their rules and whatnot. So I always like ironically end up like, you know, meeting different people. And so then I'll be able to have my social interactions through that. And I'll be able to have more control over my life. So, yeah, that, that's just where I'm at right now. Like, you know, with everything going on.